really know who's on FaZe Clan, but when we're looking at Nip, there's a couple of names you need to, to talk about or knock about even. We've got Knock over here, we've got Plopsky, two guys that have been instrumental in the successes that Nip have found. Meanwhile, a pistol round, it's here, it has arrived, and it's time to remove the scarves and get down to action. Yeah, getting a bit hot and sweaty here, wearing a jacket indoors, Trace, but uh, I, I support the it drop. cool. I support the drop at the very least, right? So Yeah, you know, at least we're thankful for it, unlike Harry. I'm feeling fresh, I'm feeling stylish, and NIP might be ready to go on the T side of their map pick. It's overpass, and it's uh, a long time overdue. I've been ready for this series all day long. FaZe Clan, do they keep up their flawless streak? 7-0 and in the group, unbeaten. NIP, the only team they lose to is Astralis in a BO3 that they at least take the distance. So NIP, not slacking at all. Looking to pick up a victory here in this B bomb site. It's going to be five players grouped on Monster. Smokes and flashes going over, and here come the cavalry. Yeah. Yeah. Charge it on in. Lecro leading the spearhead on this spear, I guess. Plopsky down in the water. Does open up with a kill onto Brokey, no less. And this B site. Well, now it's officially Swedish. They'll boost up into the heavens and they'll go hunting. Now, I said it belongs to the Swedes, and Ooh. it still does. Olaf goes toe to toe versus his fellow countryman and comes up short. So now a three on four here. Nico's getting boosted by Cold Zera. And Nico delivering both kills has made this one feel doable. Plopsky is in heaven and he does have res with him. They if know. you're FaZe, you know about this. Olaf has already called it. However, Olaf had the kit. He was the man up in heaven. So these kills oh, are now going to come in. Nico on for the ace, and he's going to get it. He gets five. Nico, no all defuse. the kills, but no defuse oh. for FaZe. Such a shame. A great round from Nico. A great look from this guy yeah. in round number one. And not enough to get the pistol in the bag. And it's all because of that kill onto Olaf in heaven with the kit. And that's just a little bit of an uh, evidence or a tribute, as you will, to the last seven matches that FaZe have played. Now, check this out. They've got a 2-0. They get a, another 2-1. They beat up on Copenhagen Flames. They 2-0 Godsent, 2-0 Mouse Sports, 2-1 the Movie Star Riders, 2-0 G2, and then 2-0 North. Whoa. Excuse me, 2-1 North. So... That's quite a few wins in a row, if you ask me. Yeah, not uh, not a bad scoreline at all. And Nico has been at the helm of all of that as well, right? He, you know, I don't need to tell you this guy's sick. If you know his name, you know his game, and his game is pretty damn good. NIP, don't want to let him get off to a strong start, though. Despite that, it's an ace and a pistol that is fallen on dead ears. NIP, they've got a lot of rifles in round number two, playing things safe, playing things secure. On Mac 10 on Nork to make the money. Brokey right now is scoped up on Long and NIP look interested. <clears throat> a smoke towards the front of toilets. They move out into middle. Taking time on this default. Bomb still dropped in T spawn outside of B. So at any point, they can fall back to Twist or he can pick it up and join them. That will be what uh, happens as NIP move closer towards that A site. Phase with no information this round. They don't play anyone in the connector, they play double A site. Severely restricts their view over the toilet area, but with this one rifle, it might be able to find some success, especially with the rotate coming up. Nico's now moved to the A site, and NIP are walking into a pretty heavy setup. The two best weapons phase muster, and the best player on the team with a deagle. So, good Ooh, luck. Oh boy, here it comes. That smoke's gonna fade. Plops, he's gonna be right on the other side of it. He might even think about walking through it. A flashbang comes out. That Ooh. might be what it takes. Nico wants to re-smoke that. He wants to shut the door on the bathrooms right here, but it's gonna be rain that falls to Plopsky. He's the first kill in this round. Sets us up for a real awkward situation inside of the A bomb site. The kill's finally starting to come through, and so is the bomb plant. Look at Brokey. He's made a play, and just 14 seconds left on the clock. Two players here, and Olaf and Coldzera trying to thwart the plant. That's not gonna be the case. Only one player going down for the Ninjas. Coldzera backs away with his head armor, smoking a deagle. Meanwhile, Olaf, he wants to run the gauntlet. He wants to play around a little bit. And you can't blame the man. He's seen things in this map that no one else can see. Yeah, true. From heights that no one else have ever, has ever reached. Or ever attained again. That's true. It's kind of like Olaf climbed, or climbed Mount Everest almost. <laughs> Olaf clown. <laughs> Olaf clowned Mount Everest. <laughs> What's up now, Mount he Everest? did clown on LDLC. That is that is one thing. That's... That was such a weird... Because I, yeah. I remember that. You I, was, I was there. I'm standing next to Sean Garris, and we're both watching this kind of like... And like this weird, you know, disbelief. Yeah. Like, what the heck's going is on right here? Is this allowed? <laughs> Hello? Volvo? Yeah, it was a weird one, wasn't it? But uh, yeah, I mean... 
you, you bro, Brokey coming through the smoke and killing the planter, if he did that versus VP, he would have won the round because oh, yeah, they like, would have had three seconds left on that plant, on the time rather. But NIP, they give it enough time, right? They have 15 seconds left up. Doesn't matter. The Brokey stops a bomb. They can put it back down again but with it, the right numbers this time. And you know, Hugo, Brokey's kill there on the planter is the only other kill that FaZe have gotten in this game outside of what Nico did in the pistol round. Yeah, not the strongest start for FaZe Clan, but... You know, it is early days. We haven't seen a rifle round yet for FaZe. Rain had an M4 in that round, but nothing done with it. Grenades towards B. We have no one boosting right now. They're going to pop flash towards short, taking the water area. No one here for the T side. NIP hear the flashes as well, so they know there's at least some bit of foothold here for FaZe. And therefore, numbers. And that's what NIP are trying to avoid in this round. They want to go into the empty bomb site if they can. And that will be A right now. Olaf getting pinched in the connector from both sides. Oh, catches a kill. Good, almost double it. The Deagle, good damage up close. If you hit them in the chest, he puts 52 the way of Nork, but an AK secured and a trade found. NIP will move elsewhere, move back up towards A. FaZe have decided to gamble with the rotation. They're moving all five of their players up from B as well, or four rather. Oh no, a double guess. They don't commit, they come back out lower, and NIP set up smokes onto A. If FaZe committed, they would have had the perfect read. Instead, they are just going to be sleeping down with the fishes as NIP find a third. Yeah, convincing start from NIP, and a good start as well. So they go 3-0 and up here, and these pistols not able to find anything in the third round for FaZe. But this next one is where things will get exciting. This is the round that we've been waiting for. The rifles about to come through for phase. Nico has already shown us a bit of a treat in the pistol. You like seeing Nico starting strong. It always sets you up for a good series, it feels like. Yeah, I think you're right, Harry. I think that's about bang on. Speaking of getting banged on, it is Nico by knock. Oh, and rain. That one hurt. Yeah, clean, clinical stuff. Oh, oh, there's a kill there. Oh, Nork was so low, but he gets defended by twists. That's, that's a really hard fight anyway. It's kind of yeah. hard to see the head right there. Party's always a good spot to, to save or wait in. You can hide behind the benches. Say you're in party and you're looking at connector, for example. You can hide behind the benches and they'll come out con. They just won't see you until they are like standing up in the entrance. At that point, you just have the kill you know, on a plate. Good spot to play. 3-0, NIP in control. But here's the buy. Here's all we've been waiting for, right? That ace from Nico in round number one. Well, it meant nothing, but now it could be something here for FaZe. Brokey peeks him in with the AWP. He spots them, but he won't hit a shot. The smoke is down. And NIP cross towards a playground. Nico, you'll commonly see him spamming this uh, connector area as well. They blow the door off from the B site. FaZe uses a grenade to get that done. And therefore, the warbang does even more damage. A lot of teams frequenting, uh, frequenting that play. Oh, Nork. He just clicks Nico, jump spotting on B. That's the ace player from the pistol gone. Nico won't have a say in this round, and Nork isn't done with one. He's found Cold Zero on lower as well. Peek through the monster. What a nuisance. This is a very awkward round for FaZe. They're desperately like looking for any little edge of information they can get. Olaf is trying to clear water, but as he peeked on round over here towards short, Nork had crossed into his little cubby, and they seem destined to meet. Two Swedes coming together, and it's going to be Olaf to deal with the man in question. Nork gets the short end of the stick down towards B. Now the A play, the real bread and butter of this round for NIP. They oh. try and close the distance, but to do that, you got to get past Grokey, and they do deal with him eventually. It's Lecro to get that kill. A two on two, still attainable for NIP in this round. The bomb has been retrieved. Olaf has been spotted, but it's Rain who's the X factor, the unknown quantity barreling in. Twist is able to get the bomb planted and desperate to navigate oh. this 1v2. Looks to isolate that fight onto Rain, but couldn't quite do the job. It's going to be FaZe finding their first round here in round number four. Two players staying alive. The AWP maintained as well. That's going to find its way back into the hands of Brokey. Not the end of the world for an IP. Still plenty of money as the result of those first three rounds being so clean. I say three rounds, more like 
Not the pistol, but the other two. The two important ones that actually build up the money. Yeah, I mean, FaZe, I think one of the reasons their success has really come recently is Brokey's finally gotten comfortable in this roster. They've moved him onto the main orb role. He pretty much orbs everywhere, every map, every half. Um, and I think that's a great move for FaZe. Uh, you know, we don't see the, the the problem that can haunt teams of, of, you know, having to switch up orbers, which can be a good thing, but it can also take away uh, if you have a really prominent AWP player. So Brokey looks good inside of this roster and FaZe's results have been there to prove it. Two kills in that round with the AWP for Brokey. He's not got armor in this one. He's dropped over a gun. But he is at least armed and dangerous. Oh, quick flash towards B short. No one pushes with it, but Cold's got to be careful of his back. Luckily being covered by Olaf. There are players in connector. Propsky not interested though. Just going to hold it as a rotation point. Just holding on. Slowly, of course. Cold Zera does get a shot off on a Plofsky. Starts to set up FaZe Clan in the right direction here on their defense. Ooh, a Brokey. Another AWP kill. And he's hungering for a little bit more. Does actually overextend perhaps a tiny bit too far and offers up that kill to Twist. Now, what they weren't expecting during this exchange was for Nork to also find a kill down towards the B bomb site. And now, two on three, still in with a chance. Ah, oh, the Nip squad. They're going to go back and retrieve this bomb. That's now on the back of Nork. He's going to look to rejoin up with Lecro. But while all this is going down, while NIP are rearranging the furniture, Rain, he's come in on this flank, and he's now looking to wrap toilets. This could throw a bit of a spanner in the works for NIP. Nico is drawing the attention away, just baiting the Swedes into the bomb site. And while they will find the plant, this flank from Rain is something that NIP still have to consider later in this round. Olaf has arrived from B, and Rain's arrived oh. from his flank, and he'll deal with both of them. The defuse are now going to come on through. Phase a second round on the board. The AWP retrieved once again, even the opportunity to go for a double AWP if they would like. They will decide against it, saving the two AKs forward alongside the AWP. Yeah, and you know, we're, we're looking at a monetary situation for NIP where they can purchase up, they could force up here, they could have something to show for themselves. Now, what's been shown on Twitter is a different story, and I've got to ask you guys right at the source here about what's happened. I'm seeing a scoreboard, I'm seeing Hugo Harry tagged in this, but also Don Hassey. It's a weak tweet. It's a real weak tweet, I gotta I say. Just, I wish I could understand. It looks like you guys are teammates. Yeah, we played the game with him once, and me and Harry got 27 kills each, and are he got 30, and he called it a carry, but he's plus three over us, so. Are you Don Hassey? No, I'm actually. Well, because there were three of us in that lobby there, so yeah. that wouldn't work. Well, it might. Your maths is off, Trace. I know you guys got laptops. Anyway. Busted. All right, well, Trace has solved it in, in this one. It took everyone else years, but Trace has done it. Figured it it's out. the laptop ah. all along. That's that's what Don Hasey is. Nothing more than a laptop indeed. Maybe Great we get Harry. Don Hasey to call in to the show. What do you yeah, guys he think? Wouldn't. That's he a wouldn't. good idea. I'd Don Hasey, if you would call in, I would love to speak to you. Obviously, do it. we might want to speak before the show. <laughs> But I think uh, you can provide some real insightful stuff here, bring out some cool show elements, and ultimately put a voice to a name. Yeah, so every time we play with him, his mic is, quote, broken. So that's always an quote. interesting one. Sources. Mm. Uh, attempted the nade stack. Doesn't actually deal with Brokey down in B. And uh, now Rain aggressed into the toilets, trying to hold this uh, this forward position. Rez might sniff this out, however. And actually, Rez goes in first. He had the bomb. And that there is disaster striking Oof. in the purest of forms. Oh. Rain, a second kill, and it is a rain of bullets over in the toilets. My goodness, everyone's been torn apart. Rain is on a tear. And Lecro, so low, Range has got to finish the job, but there's the wrap from Twist. No one was watching long, and that's opened up an avenue, perhaps, for NIP. Thankfully, Brokey is there to plug the hole, and Olaf comes in from the wraparound phase. Three on the board. They tie this up nice and early. They're not going to give NIP room to breathe in this matchup. No money left on the Nip squad. It is just going to have to be an eco in this round. 
And we've had both these maps between these teams, right? We had them back at Blast um, at the start of the year. It was, it was you know, favorable to phase in a big way. It was a 2-0 on Mirage and over past 16-7, 16-8. So obviously NIP, I think, have, have gotten so much better in the last four months. And they've proven that here in Road to Rio. But I want to see, you know, what this, what this rematch is, essentially. Are NIP going to be able to take it over the line this time? Or will it be a phase finish? We'll have to wait and see. Bomb moving out middle. NIP have Deagle and Smoke in this round. A lot of utility, considering it's a low investment, and they haven't even focused on Kevlar either. So looking for an execute, looking for a bomb plant potentially in this round. Faze only have two on the top side, but Nico has been very good with his early rotations, and he will actually go for it once again, already creeping up the stairwell. And this is based off of nothing but silence, and silence sometimes is the biggest uh, giver of information, right? You know B is empty, you know NIP aren't throwing anything uh, that way, so you can gamble on this top side, and boy is this a gamble. Four players on A, and one in CT spawn. <laughs> no one even playing the lower side. Faze... I have a feeling they know what's going on. I have a feeling they know where an IP are. And they're ready for the fights. Brokey's dropped Rez on long. Now it's down to the short play. They're going to try and focus on this bomb plant. That's what an IP bought for in this round. But Lecro has been picked up early. The bomb is on the site. The bomb isn't getting, pl isn't getting planted. Sorry, as Rain sprays it through the smoke. He finds two. Nork with a deagle. Gets some damage. Gets a kill. But he will get put to rest. Phase with four. They take the lead. They take it right back out of the hands of NIP. Four in a row for this European mix and NIP coming back in with money. I really love that the Brokey has just come into his own since being on the orb, especially when you think about like the storyline of him picking up this gun for the phase squad, right? Like obviously, the orping responsibility originally when Brokey was in this team lied with Olaf and it was Brokey playing more of a lurk role. And then he became the uh, the T side main orb. And from then on in, it just grew to become becoming him on the main orb, both sides. 99% of the time, I know that Nico sometimes picks that up. Well, that's the cool versatility of this lineup yeah. too, right? Because some lineups we look at and say, okay, yeah, they could double op. Some lineups could even, you know, have Portal. more than that. You yeah, know, you could yeah. go triple, quadruple. I mean, the reality is you could just bounce it around, obviously shuffle it between the players that are proficient with it. But, you know, it, it's not unheard of to see Olaf pick up an, an AWP. Yeah. He, he, when when Brokey joined this team, it was Olaf and Brokey swapping orbs on, you know, map dependent, right? Like, the, you know, depending on who's playing where, what the case was, you would see Olaf orb, like CT nuke outside, stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, you have that in a lot of teams. But I think in this team, it's good to have just one primary orper, and obviously anyone can pick up that second inside of this roster, but right, pretty much. Well, it removes that that little bit of doubt, right? Or excuse me, that removes that little bit of dilemma or discussion of it. Meanwhile, there's not much of a discussion being had outside of long A. It's going to be a flurry of kills. Lecro will be the last man standing, at least from that side. He's not the only one setting for the NIP team. A little bit of slip through the connector here. It's gonna be Olaf, who takes down Nock. And with a trade from Twist, this continues to go the way of phase. Two on one, Lecro, 20 seconds. And that's just about all she wrote. I think he's realized it. And perhaps Brokey has peeked off at A and seen him. He's going to hold the line. Yeah, Lecro knows. <laughs> There's no winning this round, sad as it is to say. Cold's like so smart there as well, right? He runs up the stairs and it's just the fake that he's chasing Lecro. And even that noise made Lecro flat out reconsider it. So he just turns around and Cold never even peeks him. There's never even a chance to take that gun away, at least as like a bit of a consolation prize for Lecro. So five now on the board, four phase, a very convincing CT side oh, yeah. beginning. This has turned completely, you know, 180 from what we saw in the very beginning stages of this round. And obviously so. FaZe lose the first three, net five in a row. I want to pose the question, since we do just have Lecro in the AK that he salvaged from last round, I'm going to pose it to you two, okay. as well as everybody out there in the Twitter sphere using hashtag ESL1. What pro would you like to hang out with for a day? For a day? I mean, day or just like hang out, like go go-karting, golfing, I don't know. Which pro would you think is the coolest, Hugo? Probably... It'd probably be an ex-pro or like someone who's played in the servers but hasn't, you know, made a career out of 
playing Counter Strike more managerial. Maybe you're moved into broadcast talent. Oh my God. Well, oh, he's on about you. Someone like yeah, Sean yeah, Gares. Yeah, oh, Sean Gares. <laughs> Actually, that's a really good shout. Yeah. Wait, what is Sean managing? Yeah, maybe uh, himself. Uh, very miss, well. Of course. Big business. Yeah, big business. I think Pop Dog even is his, his thing. I was going to say, like, Rain's a pretty cool cat. Yeah, dude. Rain's nice. I mean, but. When you know players by first name, like Howie, of course. Yeah, right. You know. That's a whole different cool. level. Look at this, by the way. It's a B play, and well, it's all over. So, how the earth have they done that? Phase Ow. six on the board. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second there, but ultimately, you're funny, Harry. And you're a wizard. That's what I needed to hear. Both of those things in that order. And I'm rejuvenated now. Phase 6-3 up. Continuing to build up this CT scoreline. NIP yet to make a dent since that pistol round and the conversions they found on the back of it. They have to turn the tide sometime soon or else they might get swept away with it. Phase showing absolutely no signs of slowing down here. And connector control looking, be, looking to be the aim of the game in this round. Plopski. Ready to go a blow for blow with Rain if required. Instead, Rain drops a nade and gets out of there. Concedes this con control. And this is going to open up a world of possibilities for NIP. They're testing the waters over here in middle. They're going to see what they can find. And if they force phase back, then the option is open to go for a late B rotate or a late B to A rotate later in the route. So you can fake this, this kind of game plan out a bit now. Yeah. And you've got a lot more options available. Speaking of options, Plopsky doesn't know that he is flirting with death. Rain, the coolest guy in the server, hands down, according to sources. It's me right there on the other side of the divider. Most of you typing nothing. Not really sure why. I mean, I guess he's cool. Not the coolest guy, I know, but certainly is cool nonetheless. Rain, it's going to be that nuisance, and Plopsky hasn't even moved. He held his ground there, but that gave Rain the opportunity to go around and look for kills of his own. Oh, Nork, he's going to check this. The boost is up, but Nico getting damage gets away with his life. And I think that's worth it, right? You get the info, you know NIP are at least watching and be sure. You know they haven't completely conceded this site, and therefore you shouldn't rotate off. You already have the advantage. And Rain is still pushed up at the Vider, so you should know this is a B play. Well, that's more than confirmation. Olaf kills coming his way in the B bomb site. And it might just have to be the save after all. NIP sneaking back in through T-Spawn with the orb. Looking to hold on to their weapons. They're not going to have money behind this, though. Loss bonus is pretty high, but without a bomb plant, they can't fully invest, and Twist might not even keep this orb. They consider pushing. Olaf doubles back. Won't go for it. That's just going to be the full save for NIP. 7-3 for FaZe. Ever since NIP closed their conversions, FaZe have not dropped around. This is an excellent CT side. They've also had, you know, two alive in two of them, but three or more in every single other. So FaZe are rolling in it right now. And They're printing. Them. And the best thing about, you know, we look at this game and we didn't really have a whole lot of time to go over it beforehand. You know, this is an upper bracket semifinal. So either of these teams pending a loss will drop down and play Vitality in the lower semifinals, so. That's a cool game. I mean, I wanted, cool I did want G2 Vitality. I'm gonna put that out there. I wanted that because obviously French matchup, we haven't seen that game with the current forms of the rosters. I mean, with you the know, current we, rosters, let alone the four. We could get G2 Heretics instead, which yeah, that would be like That'd be the... kind of fun. I feel like G2 would just, you know, the fact that Vitality made quick work of Heretics would make me, you know, think that G2 would make even quicker work, right? In theory. That being said, any French matchup like that is going to be fun. So we'll keep our eyes on how this bracket goes. But right now, neither team wants to go to the lower bracket. They want to fight their way to that upper final. Because, of course, we're expecting... I, I imagine you guys are in the same page. as expecting Astralis to show up today over G2. Are you assuming? Yeah, that would I don't be my, actually know. That would be I my think, expectation. I think that's a very even matchup. And I honestly think G2 could come out ahead. They've looked really good as of late. Yeah, they, they have looked very comfortable in sort of the path that they've created for themselves. Yeah, and yeah. even that like head-to-head -head of Kenny versus Device is an interesting yeah. one. We brought that up at the start of the show and just how Kenny has looked incredible these last few months, whereas Device kind of started slow and it's like building back into it. So that's an interesting talking point. But let's focus on this round at hand. Let's do 11 that. 11 rounds of play. And NIP hoping that an A play might find them success here in this round. They go over here towards Long. They boosted Twist to give him an angle. And as he falls down, Ooh. there was a peak made available. Rain 
Gets the info that an orb lies at long, and a smoke now complements that by falling into the toilet. So that's going to slow down NIP on their approach. Oh dear. They decide to try and go through it. They try and pick up the pace, but Rain has not been missing a beat at the toilets. Nico spamming away actually does get bested. Nox Deagle arrives, and in the blink of an eye, he's brought it down to a two on two. The Deag. Has a lot to answer for on the back of it. Nork now upgraded onto an AK, taking up position in the bank, but he's not looking to withdraw from this round. Instead, just holding the line, twist with the AWP, shutting down another. It's all onto Cold Zera in a 1v2. Twist continuing to hold the dumpster. And he will lock in a fourth round for an IP. Norx Deagle, my goodness, where yeah. did that come from? This kill spams rain down, follows it up by charging on into this site. Look at this, mm. nice one there on Tanika, but he's out in the open. That's the impressive one. Yeah. The third shot onto Brokey, because at that point you've chained together two. You've already done a lot if you're Norg. And then the pre-fire onto the AWP truck, incredible. I like how Popsky gets pop flash through that smoke in front toilets. FaZe have been really, really good at re-smoking the toilets as NIP set up for executes. And someone on the A side throws a re-smoke towards Divider. And Popsky hears that pin go and he just goes, yeah, I'm going, I'm, I'm pushing. I'm going to get this kill. Catch a player with a smoke in hand or, you know, worst case scenario, just get into the site. You don't want to just sit behind the smokes because then FaZe not only will rotate A, they know you're there, but you'll run out of time as it was down to the 30 second mark. NIP, they make it work though. They win that low economy round and they put FaZe on the back foot when it comes to money. This buy has no issue, but there will be issues if FaZe don't win it. So Brokey needs to be very careful with this AWP. He's going to fall back to the site, reposting for connector. Flash out though, he misses the leave. NIP get out of this position. They're gonna reface back in, but Brokey again. Timing is a cruel mistress. He falls off as they peek him, and the flashbang sends him back. He fires a shot. So NIP know the AWP is here. Will that send them down low? Will they go back through connector? Because the whole time they've had a man outside of B watching, trolling, uh, trolling the perimeter rather making sure no one gets aggressive. And I think there's a bit of a spot there. Nork has to go through the Molotov. He's committed, he's pushed through, and he's not gonna last long. Oh, Cole makes quick work of him. AK picked up, his teammate gone. Cole has to hold the line, Ooh. and they line up for him. Two more before Nico dives in as well, leaving just Twist alone late to this site in a one on three with 20 seconds. He has the bomb, but already a man from upper. Rain's gone. Nice. Twist has a chance in this round. Is he ready for Nico? He's re-aggressed, the timing is good, and oh, Twist looks away. Doesn't get more unfortunate than that. Nico will close it, him and Cold Zero make it happen. Man, timing in this game, just about everything. Cold Zero with three kills in that round ensures that Nip will have no further say as to how it pans out. Good stuff there from the Brazilian. I will say, man, like it always feels like if this phase squad were able to start to like find their form and play at the level we expect them to be able to play, I think they could be one of the best teams in the world. Yeah. Right? Like with this combination of players. Of course. And that's a funny incredible. thing. Like, that's that why doesn't I even sound unreasonable. No, exactly. And, right? and that's why I feel like everyone for so long was like, disappointed with what we were seeing from FaZe just because of the names in the server and how much weight they carry. And especially because like it always felt like you would get a great game and like a great game plan out of one of them at the very, very least. It was just everyone showing up at the same time never seemed to be there for FaZe. Right. But this kind of system of having, you know, Olaf in his position, you know, playing this kind of lurk crawl away from the rest of the team in the T-Half, Brokey main in the AWP now. It's all bred a lot more consistency for this phase squad. I absolutely yeah. love what we're seeing from them. And it has just been improvement to improvement throughout but this online play. I, I, I do think you are, are nailing it spot on when you say disappointment, right? Because that is not something that you would expect out of a lineup of all-stars. Albeit, what I don't think a lot of people take into consideration is you don't just mash these things together. You don't no. just, you know, yeah. expect it to work right out of the gate. It's not a plug and play sort of scenario. Meanwhile, a plop twist here is we do see the B bomb site falling down falling away from that of the FaZe Clan. Ooh. And now that leaves us in a 3v2 Brokey, taking damage over and over, finds himself stuck at Graffiti. Out on the island, and there are no water reserves.
with plenty of water and it's surrounding him. It's drowning him. Rain has come through the water position. He's looking for the kills and he's found one. Another man pushed up in the pit though. That's Plopsky. Rain got him dead to right and it's uh -oh. a wrap from Nork from Monster to Shore. He's looking for that bomb defuse. Rain checks it, but he's dead. And now it's up to the orb that he's yet to tap the bomb. Nork is playing the time. He is playing the clock. And Brokey, he's got to force a fight. He's not going to. Nork is just stalling it and he's even going to perfectly pre-aim. Taking down that AWP, picking it up and taking the round for an IP. And you have to give credit to Nock there. Really well played, especially when he finds himself just trapped and tucked into the sandbags. The timing was right for him to get up there and be that unbeknownst force that was going to stop a defuse. Lo and behold, Rain, you know, after having come through that area, has no idea. So Nock plays it to perfection. Brokey does what he can, but ultimately, it doesn't quite matter now, does it? Eight to five. We near the end of the first half of play here between FaZe and Ninjas in this upper bracket semifinal for the SL1 Road to Rio. Yeah, pistol stack for FaZe in this round. They really don't have any more to offer. They're focusing on getting an investment into round 15, and this might guarantee a sixth on the board for the NIP boys. And what holding on to be while the rest of the gang are slowly but surely working their way up through the toilets. Now, the moment Nork spots a stack here, that pace is sure to get accelerated. Still only seen one thus far. But the rest of Nip are already inside of the A site, so they know what's going on. Uh -oh. Nork's actually kind of prioritized of getting the hell out of there. I think he's realized, like, <laughs> B is not where I want to be at right now. Well, I'm gonna... chill. You're chill. We're all getting out of here. We'll all just get on with our lives. And that seems uh -oh. to be... Oh, <laughs> oh dear. That's no. not where you wanted to go, Nork. You are in yeah. the lion's den. And unsurprisingly, that is where the lions are. Yeah. Weirdly enough, that is quite a phenomenon you have there. Phenomenon. A phenomenon. Da, phenomenon. Da, 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 da. But anyway, da, 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 da. the big toaster. It's not going to have much success in this round. It's going to be the ninjas in pajamas that put one up on the board. In fact, I say the big toaster, he loses his head. He becomes unplugged. I'm trying to get... No, where? don't worry. If you, don't, if you have to ask, man. Okay. You know what Angelica Pickles would say. <laughs> so another round for the ninjas. They look to make this... Last round of the half theirs as well to keep this a very close score for phase at one point. An IP sure. of, you know, put some rounds on the board at the end of the half, six or seven, no matter where it really ends, they're going to be satisfied. Seven would be nice though. Put a hurt the way of phase, see if they can do it. Phase have taken their mid spawn. That's not an AWP though, that's range. Just having a looky and he won't last long. The flash pushes him back. Goes back to Divider. It's been treating him well. Brokey's got the AWP on lower and. Oh, they walk right into it, but he misses a shot. Just over flicks there. Oh, Rain turns around as they contact through the smoke and he peeks back into a flurry of players. They are just going to fast pace, push this A site. Lecros flashes team up. Nico is trying to rotate, but he knows that he might just have to dive through and take fights here. His teammates gone through the wall. Rez has followed up, nailing bullets to the face of FaZe. They can't save. It's the last round of the half. Olaf and Cold, two on five, and not an easy two on five to win, especially not with Cold's error, somewhat trapped here in the connector. As he tries to get up, there's two players holding this. Now, Nork has just migrated away. So Twist is the only line of defense for Con, but that's a shot he's got no problem hitting. Olaf, there's still a lot of utility here for an IP, so Olaf is pretty much screwed. Like, I don't want to... <laughs> yeah. I don't want to prelude the events. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Eight to seven, FaZe Clan running it here by one round, one singular round, not to be confused with the pluralization of one, which doesn't exactly exist. Either way, we're gonna see a quick, fast, and a hurry take here from the side of FaZe. They wanna get up into this B-bomb site. It's Plopsky that has put a halt to that as it stands. And now in a 3v4. Yeah, Brokey's still here to commit. He swapped out to a USP, but remember, NIP is stacked in his site, and they've got the backline cut off as well. Rez is in connector, so there's no escape here for FaZe. If they try, they will die, and so they're going to commit towards B with a boost first to get a kill. That's not going to be available. Olaf is still in the pit, but there's no utility to assist him or get him out of here. The drop gets heard, and so that's further confirmation to Rez that two players are in the short water. He's going to go for the full wrap round. I like this. It's a bit of a danger. It leaves Con open, but at this point, I think NIP should know FaZe are committing. If they were going to back off, they would have already backed off. So this flank from Rez is taking a sweet time, but it is there. It is available. 
And he's hanging around at the choke point so he can just stop the rotation rather than force the kills. That'll be down to his teammates in B. And Plopsky's waiting for it. Nico pushed up very deep. They haven't cleared the pit. Mm. And Plopsky is waiting in it. He's got one. Looking for a little bit more, but overwhelmed. Three in the round. Olaf does take him down. Now it's a flank from Rez. A little bit late, maybe. But he is here to play. One on two. Kit in the pit. Very doable. Kit in the pit. Nowhere to sit. Rez completely catches Brokey off guard, but now the jig is up. Sweet on sweet violence, and who's oh. going to come out on top? It's Rez. He's not going to grab the kit. Doesn't necessarily need it. That should be completely fine. Taking this second, though, to give a quick shout out. We got a tweet in here. I actually invited all of you to get a tweet into us, but this lad, by the name of at Linus Peacock 101. Some good old British tea with the boys at hashtag Road to Rio, hashtag ESL1. Sip away, lad. Sip away. Sip away. Sip up, my sippers. Zip up, my zippers. No, that's uh, an S, not a Z. No, you'll have to do that yourself, Trace. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I'll sorry. deny that offer uh, yeah, this good. time around. <laughs> good to go. All right, we're zipped up, we're strapped in, we're ready to go. Eight Ooh. to eight, NIP tying this one up. Keeping it competitive, keeping it close. Keeping it real. And that's the most important thing. Now down here in Connector, there are a bunch of dudes who you might recognize. FaZe, pretty much all here with the exception of Brokey, Nico, and Olaf. They've actually headed up in towards mid, away from Khan, leaving this to Raid. And Nico, and he might not fare too well here as the door swings wide. Nork's going to delete him. These deagles now left up in a three on five. Not expecting much. You know, the main focus here for FaZe is when these rifles come out in the following round. If you're able to find anything here now in a three on five, you're pretty content with it. Real passive stuff from NIP. They don't really want to throw anything more than they have to. Lecro's getting curious, but he probably, look, man, you can see, you can see it in him. He's getting bored of waiting. He's not liking it anymore. Lecro, he's a man who likes action. And that's what he might get if he continues on this path up through Connector. We got a few action men on the other side, one of them being Twist, and oh, there's Lecro. Saying hello and good night in the same sentence. Just like that, the round is over. And IP keep five alive. Nine to their name and leading in the game. It is their map pick, of course, in this series. And so NIP on the CT side now where they should be most comfortable. But of course, now FaZe get to direct the pace of the game. And that's what I'm most excited about. Brokey on the AWP. We have full buy in for phase and still this essentially what is a bonus round for nip but not big holes not big gaps in the buy an mp9 couple of fami but it's all right you can get the job done molly's in middle two of them in fact cold's gonna smoke the first but he doesn't want to cross, cross towards playground with that smoke or with that molotov rather it's often used to, to let a long player get aggressive because t's don't want to waste two smokes to get towards a playground one is fine two now that's just a bit much so no one pushes long, and IP still take a safe passive round with the exception of Nork. Pushed up in B water. He might get a fight here as well. Rain's coming in through connector. And at any point, Nork can call for a grenade or throw one of his own that will blow open the door and give him a little bit more information towards his stairwell. Doesn't want to do that himself, though. Rather let FaZe make the first contact happen, and they'll move towards middle with four. That bomb's going to go back and rejoin up with Olaf here. It's going to be a B-side play from FaZe. They completely relinquish all their A control as they set up to go for this play in the B-bomb side. But do keep your eye on Rez. He's getting a little bit curious as to what Long and Mid have in store. And as he's spread out, he's kind of secured a front line mm. again for NIP. Now with that kill onto Plopsky, it should become obvious where this play is coming to a head at. Lecro dropping a smoke, trying to play close to the pillar, but he gets bested. It's Nico and Olaf giving the entries over to FaZe and securing them this B bomb site. Rez and Twist. They might just have to save on this one. The nade finds good damage combined with Twist spray, but not enough to get the kill. And, you know, maybe if it had in a two on three, we might have seen an IP look to attempt this round, but that's no longer the case. 
They decide if they hold on to this, a reinvestment in the next sounds a lot better than just having to partially invest. And so they bow out of this round. They concede a ninth to FaZe. This game still neck and neck as FaZe are not ready to give up this lead to NIP just yet. He wasn't ready. Yeah, we're going to stay tightly packed here in this upper bracket semi. Loser is not eliminated from the road to Rio. I think something very important for you to keep in mind. But for FaZe Clan, they want to keep this streak alive of, you know, basically being undefeated. Yeah. No, no, no reason to stop now, right? Like Furia, who didn't drop a single series until the grand final. Bit of a shame, but that was how NA panned out. Gen G won that over there. Of course, there's a first place prize of 1,600 RMR points for the top team in EU, 1,500 for second. So division is close. These two teams are going to be gunning for those top spots. They are in the top four right now. One team's going to get knocked to the lower bracket, of course. And so let's see who it will be. Boost up. Nico gets spotted there. He's still going to commit. Noise made, but they're watching from the barrels. Popsky gets pushed down. And Nico is on one HP, but he will live to fight, the, uh, fight another day. He will live to tell the tale. Might want to stay away from B, though, for the time being. Spam, grenades, even flashes. Pretty common occurrence, and you don't want to get pushed with one point of health to your name. You're more here to win the clutch. Let your team do the rest of the work in the short term. Now, another jump spot here, but you'll notice nothing gets seen. Rain is playing so safe, so passive, that NIP don't have the info. The info they have is misinfo, potentially. They see the bees clear, and they rotate up in towards A. Actually, I say that. That's where FaZe is going now, as they've taken the bomb back through spawn. But again, at any point, they can drop down connector and go to B. That's because of rain in this position. So if FaZe spot a couple of players here, they might go elsewhere. But right now, there's three on A and one on that B bomb site. Rez with a double setup in the toilets. I like this. Rez dies, and then you assume FaZe will not check Nork. Let's see if that's the case. The lineup, oh my goodness, it was all there for him. Knox going to be there, though, and they're not going to expect him whatsoever. Rain, he's been toasted, but he's also been avenged. It's Brokey. And now we're left in a real awkward situation. Nico on one HP. That's going to leave some playmaking to try to be done here from the side of phase, but that's not going to be the case. And on this op with the one HP with no time and a failed attempt to get inside and say bomb site, it's phase clan tucking away. Nico is going to have that AWP for another day. I might just say, lay by the bay and eat some hay. You gonna do that all day? I just may. Okay. Okay. Well, well, you know what they say, and that is that NIP currently leading the way, ten to nine. Here to play. Of course, a short tactical pause before we get into the freight. to the fray. Phase, they have been waiting for payday, and that day is here, so investment coming through. Somewhat. I mean, you know, it's payday, but uh, it's certainly not millionaires. Not right now, right? Save Dorp on Nico. He actually has the money to buy up a gun around it. And Rain's the only one taking a hit, but with Rain on a Deagle, is that really a hit? Not really. He's pretty good with that gun, so... We'll let him be. 10 to 9, though. NIP holding a close lead. Very close indeed. Now, before this game, and of course at the conclusion of the previous series, which is Virtus Pro and Amiga, we talked to a Dren from the Virtus Pro side who did win, and he wished his former teammates good luck. He actually kind of gave them his blessing, and that's because yeah. he stood in for this lineup for about five months in the early part of 2019. I think he even Ooh. played in uh, uh, Sydney with them, if I could be mistaken. Yeah, yeah FaZe have really, you know, FaZe have played with everyone, <laughs> pretty much. They've, they've given everyone a go, you know. It doesn't really matter who you are, where you're from. Welcome to FaZe. And right now, this seems to be the five that can make things happen, but depending on Nork's performance, we'll see, because he's going to stop them in their tracks coming out the monster, getting one. Nico trades, but he doesn't want to commit on 10 health uh, on his own, so he's going to swap out for the orb. Phase go elsewhere, NIP rotate back up, but they don't believe it, and that's a good call to make. Twist is still on this top site, alongside Rez, who has aggressed, and Electro is down lower. Phase still undecided as to where they want to go. 
They're watching for B. They're hoping for a kill, but nothing is presenting itself. And with Cole clearing out the back line and making sure no one's flanking, they know, okay, a bare, bare minimum, a, a guarantee, at least that we're not walking into a three-man stack, right? But... Right now, as I say that, rotates are coming through and info's being gained. Rez has pushed up toilets. He knows it's not A right now. He knows it has to be a B play. And so Twist has dropped off that top site. Just the difference in five seconds and what it could do. Yeah, look at Lecro's spot right there. You do love that. Meanwhile, he's flashed away from committing to that fight. That 3v3 is not going to yield a bomb plan for the side of FaZe Clan. Oh, Rez has somehow left this all in the arms of Nico. He's got to ace it if he mm, wants to wow. pick the round up, and Rez will respond with four kills of his own. NIP grabbing that defuse, 11 rounds to their name, and the good times continuing to roll in on overpass for this squad. Now, a bomb plant found for FaZe gives them a little bit more cash injected into those bank accounts, but really it's going to offer nothing more than a force buy here, or a partial buy, rather, for FaZe. They're not in that situation yet where, where I think they would risk the force in a round like this, even though it could be tempting, right, with only a few players surviving for NIP. You could have a chance to break money, but I don't think you're at that point of desperation yet. If you're phased, you want to be playing for these rifles. And so, yeah, it is just a partial investment. They can still do damage with this. They can still keep NIP in a bit of a rough spot in terms of the money. And you can even win this round if you're phased, right? Like, obviously, the lack of armor, I think, is the biggest issue. But you've got three players who could potentially do something big in this round. You've got two players that could potentially do something big in this round. As Nico is found through a smoke. You've got two players that could potentially do something big in this round. Yeah. And I do think, like, a real big swing factor for FaZe are these two players that could potentially do something big in this round. Well, now so at least they have one player see. that could potentially yeah. do let's something big Let's see Olaf, man. Oh, dear. Oh, no dear. one's checked Plopsky. And FaZe. Hanging up in the cobwebs in the corner. He slips on down and deals with them. And now, oh, Olaf trying to get this spin to win. <laughs> Olaf, spin to win. Pros don't and he gets it. Bomb planted. Now Olaf, what? Now it's what his you? lucky day. Moment. <laughs> lucky minute. time there as he gets the bomb down. 12 on the board for an IP as they find themselves another. It's because of those, you know, two players that could potentially do something <laughs> big in that round that really things get to the point that they were in. You have to look at, you know, a plant there as a positive, a silver lining, a solace, if you will, sort of, for FaZe Clan, who are currently down in this map. Yeah, not checking for the plop. Well, he drops right on into their face. Not pretty. Plopski, the spider, hugging the wall. You should be nice to spiders. Why? I hung out or with not. one the other day. Yeah. He was great. He was yeah. a web designer. One. Nice, oh. nice one, dude. <laughs> Did he have ambitions to be a web developer by any chance? Maybe, oh. man, maybe. Huh. I thought that you were talking about the fact that your room is invaded by flying ants, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's also that something well. else I've been dealing with. That's pretty cool. That's, like, one of my favorite things. Here's an aid stack, though, and that's uh, pretty cool as well, but it hasn't really done much damage onto Nork. A stray bullet firing through the short side certainly will. Couple little friends hanging out with Harry. And yeah, what, what's the scariest part? Is it the the ant aspect or the flying aspect? I don't know what's worse. Well, because there's not just flying ants. It's a mixture. It's oh, a whole got a nature. It's a have, whole ecosystem. They have yeah. you know non-flying ants because that's the original, and then OG. like the remake, okay. uh, the flying ant. There's that as well. So they've been actively mutating each other inside of your room. Yeah. Well, you know that tends to happen when there's such a big population inside of one place. Like ten thousand ants is going to lead to some interesting. Uh, Anthologies, perhaps. So Plopsky over here. Well, under a magnifying glass is where he puts Olaf there. He roasts him, he toasts him, and now a man advantage taken for an IP. Yeah, FaZe are looking for a pick on B right now, but losing that man to Popsky, and he, or Nork rather, is not done. He will take another kill, dropping Nico off the boost. NIP have been very ready for that. They know FaZe's tendencies in this map. They know what FaZe want to do. Ooh. Nice responsive kill through the wall. 
Cube's phase in this round. It's actually drawn the rotate down on B, but that's not a good thing because look at Rez. He is creeping. He is crawling. Eight legs on this man, and he's coming in from the back line. He knows it's a B play, and 15 seconds left for phase. They've got to go. They've got to commit. They're taking their sweet damn time. They may not even get into the site because Rez is already putting a bullet in the back of their head. Brokey with a kill, but it's all coming too little. It's all too late, and it's 13 rounds for an IP. In control of Overpass, their map pick in the series. Mirage may be next. And you really have to reflect back now to those, you know, those two players that could have potentially done something <laughs> big in that round. And ultimately, for the side of FaZe Clan, it's starting to slip away. Is that going to be your go-to forever now, Trace? You guys started this, not me. So hey, it was originally three players that could potentially do something in this round. But, you know, yeah, whatever, sometimes, dude. sometimes Anyways. not. So FaZe Clan, they want to try their luck over here at the B side. Again, it seems a flurry of grenades is going to leave Rain on 42 HP. He's already made his way up here, though, pretty quick with it. I think Plopsky realized that the timing could be there as a smoke burst out there in the monster tunnel. Ooh, quick execute, though, here. They come, Plopsky with a grenade, but it's actually the blind Lecro that gets the first blood. Nork drops the bomb, and this is falling apart for FaZe. If uh, that wasn't clear to you, Nico gets a kill. This second one could be huge, but he's out of ammo, and it could be a quick tap back. It's actually Lecro stealing the kill from Plopsky in the monster, and now Brokey needs to be a monster with his P250, but double flashbang, doesn't get a chance mm. to see. Eyes are overrated anyway, and Olaf, he'll lose his too. 14 to 9, NIP. This is a great map for them right now. Of course, you know, long term, it's looking like a three mapper if they take this because FaZe's pick is Mirage and they've lost it once this year. Like they have been so good on Mirage. And uh, that's one of the reasons FaZe have been almost flawless, you know, in, or no, they have been flawless, sorry, in the road to Rio. You know, taking it over G2, taking it over Miles, Na'Vi, Fnatic, OG, just everyone. So. Yeah, that's a bit of a worry in the back uh, of NIP's head, but you know, it's a best of three. You've got to be prepared to play that third map. And right now, this is where NIP are looking to take us. Picking up the first 14 to nine. Tactical pause coming to a close for phase. And now everything to fight for in these, what could be potentially last couple of rounds. Man, and since getting onto this CT side, this streak for an IP has just looked unstoppable. Phase desperately clutching on it to a map that might elude them here. Bit of damage exchanged early on. Lecro finding some chip damage in through the connector. Phase do at least have a foothold in this side of the map. Oh my, this guy's a beast. Plomsky just out Jules Olaf with an M4 from across the map. Lecro is getting banged up through a wall. He will actually fall off at the right time. Rain dinked as he takes down Plomsky with a trade. Damage has been spread across both sides here. FaZe have been very focused on B in this T side and it hasn't really gone their way. I mean, you know, obviously not, not the, the rounds anyway. They've only got one in this half, but yeah, I'd love to see FaZe work A a little bit more, throw some XX, because NIP have had the flanks every time. And once again, look at the Rez. He's just pushed long. He's just cleared this entire area. And now he's making the call. Guys, get ready for a lower play. Twist is going to be the first point of rotation here because in come FaZe and NIP, they're one step ahead. They already know it's coming. They pushed up into the fight. Ray taking down Nork after a trade. It's going to be Lecro in the pit, but the spray, it won't connect. Cold finds him. There's still a chance for FaZe in this round. He's got to stick the bomb, but he will burn with it. Planted, leaving Brokey in the one on two. He doesn't know the Rez is coming from the short side either. He's been silent in getting to this position. They haven't found Brokey. They're waiting for a wrap. They think he's monster. Well, they are close to the issue, but he's close to the site and he's looked away as they peek him. Rez finding the round for NIP. Great retake, Team Ace, and good information from Rez. It's all him, right? Without that knowledge, without that little mid-round push that he's been going for every single time, he wouldn't have, you know, been able to call that for NIP and they wouldn't have been stacked towards a B-bomb site. So, map point, NIP's pick going their way. at the, all that blue. All of it. Round after round, stacked them up. And like a good game of dominoes. Well, actually, 
You know, the dominoes don't fall in the game of dominoes. It's, you know, only if you set them up that way. Wow, I've lost that. Um, but anyway, yeah, in this timeout, if you're the ninjas, you're right here. You're right here, ready to cross this finish line. That is FaZe Clan on your own map pick. Now, that alone, something to consider there, especially when we start to look towards the second map of the series of Mirage. The pick of FaZe doesn't get any easier for them. Doesn't seem like they're far off their mark as of right now, but for what it's worth, not winning the duels, not winning the fight here on Overpass. It's gonna be Cold Zera that falls first to Rez with AWP. There's an unlikely sight. That op is gonna get passed over to Twist. Oh. Yeah, finally getting punished for the monster aggression, right? It's about time. NIP have been very keen to push on the CT side, and it has often worked out. So finally a B push. They think that maybe FaZe will finally go to this A site, and that does seem to be the play, but B is at least being watched. The default is good for FaZe Clan, and Olaf finds that kill. He's going to pick up the bomb and go and join FaZe late up in mid. Putting a lot of pressure on A right now. This is actually going to cause a full rotation for NIP. No one playing lower anymore. Rez waiting for the drop on Brokey. He's going to walk into it. Good spray. Rez gets the kill. And oh no, it all comes tumbling down. Twist, he finds another traded, but it's a double setup again for NIP towards long, or short side rather, that FaZe Knight might not be prepared for. Yeah, Nico's got to check it. And if he doesn't, oh, oh dear, this one could slip through the net. Olaf in a 1v3 alone and at B. There is Lekro rotating in from heaven.